one ninety six three. The hell? Bottle. Oil of clove. Okay. Well, let's just take it and set it aside. We've got a box of, um... Oh my gosh. Solution of morphine tartrate? Poison. Maybe habit farming. What the hell's going on here? Directions for use of Siret. Remove transparent hood, grasp wire loop, and push wire in to pierce inner seal, turning, if necessary, pull out and discard wire, thrust needle through skin at at least half its length, and inject solution by slowly squeezing the serrette from the sealed end. Ooh. What the hell? A bottle of Aquatil. Each coated tabule contains usual dose two or three tabules three times a day for three days. Oh, what the hell's going on? I don't know too much about this this medical stuff. Oh man! Now we have some pulvules bileron iron bile salts. Warning not to be used when symptoms of appendicitis, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting are present, except on competent medical advice. I don't know what this is. We have syringes. <sighs> so Oscar Mason while living in this house, it says February 20th, 1973, wrote a letter to Mary Greenbrier that was returned to the sender. Oh, here's the letter. Oh, it's his sister. So this is probably Terrence's mom. Katie's dad's mom. Katie's grandma. Right? Oscar is Mary's brother. Thus making Oscar... Terry's uncle. This was returned. Oscar wrote this to Terrence's mom. Dear sister, I write what shall be my last appeal to go unanswered one way or the other. I feel a prisoner as on an island with no jailer, no human soul for commune, only my one mind examining itself endlessly, endlessly searching for relief. In the years since transgression, I have sought no absolution, only bare forgiveness. In good faith, I have removed myself from all temptation, sacrificed to prove my commitment, however I can imagine. Since mother's passing, I have yearned for nothing more than the acknowledgement of my own kin to be treated as human again, to breathe the air of human spirit once more. By grace, even a wretch like me could be saved, but I do not expect it. If no response is received, I shall henceforth accept my sentence and one day simply cease to be. With a brother's love always, Oscar Mason. What the hell did he do? Transgression. So he did something very bad at least in her eyes, that she would not forgive him for. Hmm. So, um, yeah. Let's just put this stuff back. Huh. Okay. Let's just close that. So whatever it was that he did, she could not forgive. Yeah. Alright, well. I know what I'm thinking. I don't know what you're thinking. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. 
We'll just all think what we're going to think. Okay. So now we're going to go and uh, explore more of this side of the house. I tell you what, most of the time when I play a game for this channel, when I record, you know, I have a little timer over here and I play for an hour at a time, basically. And I, and I usually will, you know, look over to see how much time I've played, how much further I've got. You know, I usually look over around 20 minutes or so. This game, I look over and it's 47 minutes. <laughs> you know, I'm so engrossed in the game that I don't even bother to look at what time it is. So that's, that's, uh, that's pretty stinking cool. It's such a good story and so well told. Okay, there's a suitcase, a, like a sleeping bag or duffel bag or something. And here's another... Okay. Okay, this looks like maybe a, well, a box that had something in it. Sam. This skull ah, was the coolest thing I found in Mexico, and it was like three bucks American. I love it. Merry Christmas. Miss you, Lonnie. Treasure it always. So, she did go home for Christmas. She bought this skull and sent it to Sam in this box, I guess. And we saw that skull. Oh, I really thought you could run in this game. I could have sworn. And then this is the skull right here. This is it. There's no other little inscription on it or anything. It just says HOA Mexico. Hmm. All right. So I don't think there's anything else in here. Nothing written on the inside of the door. Yes. I'm looking at that. We found the dining room. Turn on the lights, thank you very much. So this is the second of Mom's purses we found. It's not unusual for a woman to have multiple purses. We found another purse upstairs in their bedroom. Mom's purse. Let's um, kind of get a set it out of the way here. We have a pamphlet. Manual for Forestry Research and Education Revision 6 to Calma County Forestry Service. Issued by United States Department of Agriculture. Pacific Northwest Research and Education Service. Take care of our forests. Okay. Oh. And then under that... Oh, man. Yeah, this is it. Hi, Jan. I got two tickets for EW, EWF on Thursday. That's um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, in case you couldn't figure that one out. But my girlfriend... Says she doesn't want to go. Her taste, so he's kind of a scum too. Her taste in music rears its ugly head again. Yeah, I'm being, I, I know I'm being very judgmental. I mean, I know things can be more complicated than they seem on the surface. So that leaves me with an extra ticket that I thought you might be interested in. More, let's see, more fun than clearing brush in the freezing rain, right? <laughs> oh, Rick. Okay, let's just put everything back where we found it. <laughs> That's funny, it, it insists upon putting it under the purse. <laughs> okay, fine. Be that way. So, oh, we can actually see outside. Oh, okay. Oh, there's like a little sunroom out there. Cool. Alright. Linens and... Um, Plates, and um, as far as I could tell, nothing else. I'm suspicious. All right, we'll just have to take that at face value. Here's the zine again. Looks like exactly the same one from upstairs. Here's a folder. Note. Sam, since you refuse to hear us out this afternoon, your mother and I are putting this in writing so that we are absolutely clear. God, this looks so much like my dad's handwriting, and it sounds exactly like something he would say. <laughs> you are grounded for the rest of the month from social and telephone privileges and from using your car for anything except going to and from school. We understand what you are going through, 
but we can't allow you. Well, actually, I can't imagine my dad ever saying that. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'll leave that out. <laughs> We understand what you are going through, but we can't allow you to continue with this kind of behavior at school. And clearly, once your privileges are reinstated, we can't allow you to have your bedroom door closed while Lonnie is at the house. This is the last word on the matter. Get back on course so this won't have to happen again, Dad. Good Lord. Ugh, that's way too familiar. Okay, examine slip. Disciplinary referral, Samantha Greenbrier. Greenbrier. Teacher. I cannot read that. Nachos? <laughs> I don't know what it says. Uh, referred to principal's office. This was on April 21st. Distri description of behavior or incident. Distributing inappropriate materials on school grounds. So that she was probably distributing her zine. Disciplinary action taken. Phone call to students' parents. Out of school supervisor. Oh, out of school suspension. From April 24th to the 28th. I had an interesting talk with mom and dad tonight. One you were never going to need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. I've known since, like, She-Ra. <laughs> Mom and Dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and the stuff on the locker, and they were like, is there something we should know about you and Lonnie? And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad, or disappointed, or start crying, or something. But they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them. Because they're in for one very long phase. Yep, the picture comes becomes clearer as to why Sam left. So this table's kind of a mess. Another one of the postcards I sent. <laughs> She's, she hears this real depressing, sad um, journal entry from her poor little sister, and now she's all giddy because another postcard. Uh, okay, this is uh, the Vatican, I believe, right? Is this... The, is this... Uh, let's see. <laughs> the stamp up there has butts. God, no butts in heaven. Yes, yeah, from the from Vatican City. Okay. Hi, Mom, Dad, and Sam. The Vatican is weird. As you can see, the Catholic Church still has a lot of money left over from the Middle Ages. I've gotten to see all of the art, including the Sistine Chapel ceiling, and the sculptures by Michelangelo, Donatello, and the rest of the Ninja Turtles. Har har. Mom, we'll have to come back together. I would love to be here with someone who really appreciates the history behind everything. Also, Sam, they have various relics... As in pieces of important dead people, <laughs> so you should probably come too. Next stop, next stop, Barcelona. Calm down, Dad. I won't get gored by a bull. Probably. Love, Katie. St. Peter's Square, Vatican City. Yeah. It's a neat place. Okay. Exploring the table here. We've got a mug. Nothing special about the mug. Just going to move my cursor over everything. Look under the table. I heard that. I heard that ghost. I know you're out there following me. Knife on the ground. I mean, it's just a knife on the ground, right? We're not going to, like, see blood on it or anything, right? Here, we'll just put that on the table. There. Alright. Nothing else interesting on the table. Sam, you need to quit leaving these damn buttons all over the place. The gits. Okay. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Man, this is what, the third or fourth one of these things we've seen? I still don't know what you call these things. There's a letter in here. 
first off, congratulations, Janice Greenbrier, Regional Director. And I say congratulations because come on, you're going to take the job, right? What are you waiting for? An engraved invitation? Call them back. But in the meantime, let's discuss this little outing you had with our favorite flannel clad hunk. She's not helping. What a blast. But you sound like you're reading a lot into an innocent night out. You're sure there's something there? You said he has an out of town girlfriend. You sure they're not serious? Okay, so we have to figure out when we'll see each other next in person. Enough with the letters. I owe you a congratulatory margarita, boss lady. Soon. Love, Carol. Alright, Carol, don't encourage her, geez. So we still haven't found anything in these little side things, so I'm wondering why we could even open those. And uh, we pick up yet another tissue box with nothing underneath of it, at least nothing we can interact with. Anyway, a uh, crumpled manuscript. It's like Dad's been at work again. I'll look at that just a minute. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. Either this is a fake plant or people haven't been gone long enough for it to die yet. Same with this one. Crumpled Manuscript, The Accidental Warrior. Aw, oh, don't give up on this honey. Huh. Okay. I guess, I mean, I have to assume that um, his wife, Katie's mom, wrote that, right? What a strange house with this diagonal wall. Holy cow, this is a big freaking place. Good night. Okay. So, let's see. That light um, doesn't work. I think maybe there's just a tree out there. Okay, so you remember this place. We've already been here. And we went into the uh, dining room. So now we're going down this hallway. And we found the kitchen. With the fridge. Frobisher? Pizza. Sam's schedule. Working at Crown Burger on Bethel Road. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. So she had a job at Crown Burger. Read invitation. Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Blair request the honor of your presence at the marriage of their daughter, Helen Margaret, to Mr. Richard Morris Patermock. Sunday, the 4th of June, 1995, at half past 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Sunset Lutheran Church, Seaside, Oregon. Okay, I wonder what this has to do with anything. Like, maybe the parents try to fix uh, Sam up with a nice boy to go to that uh, wedding with. Press water dispenser. Alright, that worked. Let's open the freezer. <laughs> Are there going to be any clues in the freezer? We have some frozen spinach. We have some whole kernel corn. Some succotash. All right. Ice cream. Says finest cookie caramel. Oh man, that sounds good. Cookie caramel. Come on. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Fish sticks. That sounds good too. Hmm. Mm hmm. Wait a minute. Let me stand up here. Was there something underneath of this box? No, just another box of fish. Well, okay, um, oops, so it's not looking like, uh, oh wow, we could open these drawers. <laughs> so no, no clues in the freezer. You know you're really reaching when you're looking for clues in the freezer. And now we're going to look for clues in the fridge. We have cola, I bet that's delicious, nothing like generic cola. Used by 6595. Well, that is expired, right? Ketchup. 
Okay. Well. Cheese. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, sure, it's cool that we could look in the fridge, I guess. Even though there's no clues in here. A banana. Well. I mean, this stuff doesn't look like it's gone bad yet. Okay. Nothing in there. Oh, another, uh... We got another music player here. So no doubt a uh, another cassette. Wow, this is uh this game's looking a little bigger than I thought, uh, which is awesome. But uh, sadly, it is time for me to break again. So I will do so when we come back. We will uh, finish looking through the kitchen, and then uh, we'll move on down the hallway here and see what else is on the other side of this house. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know that a lot of you are enjoying it. Thank you for letting me know. But if you did enjoy this episode, won't you please be so kind as to leave me a like. I'd love to hear from you, so please feel free to leave a comment. No spoilers, as always. And if you're not a subscriber, won't you please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you join me again in the next episode.